Hi, this is Dr. Ken Morlino from Wilmington University, and this video supports MBA 6100 managerial accounting. In this video, we will look at cost behavior, direct versus variable cost behavior. We'll look at the format and makeup of a contribution margin income statement, and we'll look at a few break-even examples. First, let's look at the nature of fixed versus variable Costs that go into the making of a product or delivery of a service can be divided into their fixed or variable components. And so we organize costs by their behavior, whether they're fixed or variable. Your text does a good job of explaining this, and there are a number of good resources and videos on the web that also explain this concept. And hopefully for many of you, this uh, f fixed versus variable cost is a review. Let's take a look first at a fixed cost. Here we have an example of a fixed cost. The actual dollar costs are on the y-axis, and we see that the fixed cost for this item, uh, which is the number of parts received, uh, is it fixed at a constant of $45,000. So the important point here that we use in our analysis is that total fixed costs are constant in the short term and we are not concerned with fixed costs per unit. Now, let's take a look at an example of a variable cost. Okay? Here is an example of a variable cost, and we see that the cost driver is the number of parts received, and so the total variable cost, in which case it's a fuel cost, increases as the number of parts received. So therefore, the more parts we receive, the more fuel cost we, we incur in receiving those additional parts. And so the important parts here are that the variable costs per unit are fixed. And we know that because there's a constant slope. Okay? Uh, so the variable costs per unit are fixed in the short term. That total variable cost equals the variable cost per unit times the level of activity or our cost driver. And again, your text presents this in great detail in the beginning of chapter two. And finally, uh, there are, like as I mentioned, there are many good resources on the web. Here is a, a YouTube video that you can view. Here is the address, but you could search on fixed and variable cost managerial accounting series for this video in YouTube. And this is an excellent refresher for fixed versus variable costs. We will now shift our attention to the contribution margin income statement. An income statement in the traditional format which is a financial accounting finan income statement found in annual reports and 10K reports is probably the format you're most familiar with. The contribution margin approach organizes costs by behavior. Okay? And in this example now, we see uh, this income statement, we see our cost organized by their variable and their fixed portions. A couple of things to notice. First, notice that top line sales and bottom line operating income, or net operating income in this case, do not change. In this case, they are both 60,000 in sales and a bottom line net operating income of 5,000. That's an important point. Regardless of the format, we can't create or increase or decrease sales or operating income. Those top line and bottom line numbers are going to be the same. All right, so again, to repeat, the contribution margin approach separates cost into the variable and fixed components. Operating managers often have control and responsibility for, uh, for variable costs, so this internal managerial accounting income statement calculates a contribution margin as a measure of how well variable costs are managed. So in this example, we see there's a contribution of margin of $44,000 uh, from sales of $60,000 after the uh, total variable costs of $16,000 are subtracted. Note, in the traditional format on the left, the category cost of goods sold. In the traditional format, cost of goods sold includes both variable and fixed costs that are associated with the making or selling of the product. Again, that is the financial accounting approach which is used by external users. Here's an example from your textbook of a financial accounting statement. It's from uh, the chapter towards the end of the book. And this is a condensed income statement for Nike for the years ending uh, May 31, 2011 and 2010. 
So this is an example of a slightly larger financial income statement. A couple of items. Uh, sales versus revenues, those terms are synonymous. We'll use the term sales, which, uh, which also implies top line revenues. The second point is that cost of sales, which we see as the second uh, item and the first cost listed, is, not, is the same as cost of goods sold. Okay. However, the gross margin, which in our case is the revenue less cost of sales, the gross margin, is not the same as a contribution margin. And the reason is, as we mentioned earlier, cost of goods or cost of sales in this case includes both variable and fixed costs. Therefore, these numbers will be different, the gross margin versus the contribution margin. Okay. An internal contribution income statement for Nike would show the same levels of sales and income but categorize their costs differently. Let's take a look at an image from your, from your book in Chapter 2. And just this is the general format that we'll be using in this course. So notice the contribution margin format on the left here. Sales, less variable cost equals my contribution margin, less the fixed cost equals net income. Okay. And we notice here this income is zero, in which we define that as our break-even point. Next, notice the per unit values. These are necessary because total sales, total variable cost, and total contribution margin are a function of the cost driver or the level of activity. And so we have per unit values for sales, variable cost, and the contribution margin. We do not have a per unit value for fixed cost. And finally, notice the percentage column on the right. Our contribution margin percentage is 20%, which is calculated by our contribution margin of 30 cents divided by the sales per unit charge of $1.50. Finally, the term contribution margin, we see that it can be used in a number of ways. In this case, there's the total contribution margin, which in our case is $18,000. We have a unit contribution margin of 30 cents. We also have a contribution margin ratio or percentage, which is 20%. So it's important to be specific about the, how we use the term contribution margin. Finally, the, the, the last part of our analysis, I've transferred that example from your text into an Excel spreadsheet, and we just looked at this portion of the contribution margin uh, income statement. And for a volume of 60,000 units, we can extend this out. So our total sales is 60,000 times $1.50 is 90,000. 60,000 times 120 is 72, et cetera. So our contribution margin of 18,000 less the fixed cost of 18,000 is a break-even operating income of zero. Okay. So again, and notice our 20% here, our contribution margin ratio. So we can extend this analysis out now to look at what happens at different volumes. So at a volume of 45,000, we see that we have a net operating income of 45, uh, negative $4,500. Again, notice we use 45,000 times $1.50 is 675, et cetera. Notice our fixed cost row, 18,000 across, regardless of the volume, because the fixed cost is constant in the relevant range. Okay. Top line sales is always equal to 100%. And notice the contribution margin is the same, 20%. As long as these values don't change, your contribution margin will stay the same. If variable costs suddenly go up to $1.25, notice that now the contribution margin is 17%, or 25 divided by $1.50, uh, and it is 17%. Uh, okay, now let's expand our analysis to look at the, uh, the use of break-even formulas. There are four break-even formulas, and I've listed them right here. Okay? And with these four formulas, you can solve pretty much any break-even problem that you might come across. The first two are the actual break-even formulas. Right? They're fixed cost divided by the unit contribution margin, or the fixed cost divided by the total CM ratio. And so in our example, we know that our total fixed cost is 18,000. And uh, we know the unit contribution margin is a dollar or is thirty cents per unit. Okay, 
And so now we see that if we do that math, we see we have a, a break even of 60,000 units, which is the same level of units we have here to give us an operating income of zero, which is the definition of break even. And if we take the second formula, right, we then use the contribution margin percentage. We know that is equal to 20%. And we see then that this is th that gives us the break even volume and sales dollars, which is $90,000 as we had originally calculated. Okay. Through the use of these formulas, we can calculate all sorts of what if analysis. For example, what if uh, fixed costs suddenly jumped to $22,000, okay? We would expect then our break even unit to break even units to increase, which in fact they have. And so these formulas are a great way to do a what if analysis. However, in business you're not con you're not content to break even. You would like to see some level of operating income. In this particular case, now we expand the formula to include a target operating income which is added to the fixed cost. And again, these two formulas are also in your chapter. So for example, let's just see if our numbers here are right. If we wanted a targeted income of $4,500, and we know that the contribution margin unit is 30 cents per unit, we see that to get a targeted income of $4,500, we would have uh, a unit, uh, the total, uh, total unit sold of 75,000. And of course, we would expect to see the same thing if we use our contribution margin percentage. Okay. Um, in this case, we have um, a, a target volume of $112,500, which is what we calculated up here. Okay. But the beauty of this is we can plug in any number. Let's say we wanted a targeted operating income of $20,000 at this level of fixed costs. Okay. In that case, we know at $1.50 per unit, we would have to sell uh, well over 126,000 units. Right. So this pretty much concludes our, our uh, analysis, but I will leave you with one question going back to our contribution margin uh, income statement. If we see this number, can you calculate the contribution margin percentage for this example? And if you calculated that it would be a, um, a value of 44,000 divided by 60,000, that would give you our contribution margin. I hope you found this video helpful in helping you understand contribution margin, margin income statements and the basics of break-even analysis.